Hi, I'm Steve Horowitz. I'm here with Mike Fink, um, who is a composer and a awesome guitar player, and um, was my first composition teacher at Cal Arts, and is potentially my last composition teacher at Cal Arts as oh, well. Oh yeah, I was glad you said at Cal Arts. <laughs> I didn't want to. No, I don't want to, to, to get too dramatic about it. Right. Um, uh, so Mike and I are going to play some music, and and the idea behind these be, behind these are that we talk a little bit, and then you know, then music plays. Right. Uh, right. So um, uh, I thought I'd start out with a question because it's just something interesting. So mm. when I was here, when when I first met you, um, we were sort of like a whole contingent of like rocker and jazzer musicians who were here at CalArts really interested in Zanakis and the Getty and contemporary classical music. And, mm -hmm. and you were like a fountain of knowledge. So we were like, we Thanks were like, give us, sounds, give us, give us, give us. Yeah, not like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, um, but then I came back, I don't remember what year it was. And I was like, so what's up these days? And then, so then you're playing guitar. And I'm like, man, you're like, well, I do improvisation and all that stuff. So it kind of flipped 180 degrees. And I was kind of curious about that. It's like, what happened for you that flipped that around? Or more what didn't happen. Or what possibly. didn't happen, yeah. yeah. Um, well, um, I played guitar quite a bit when I was younger. Yeah. And uh, actually went to school originally to study classical guitar. That's what I was accepted in. Because I'd stopped playing electric, I'd really devoted myself to classical guitar so you're playing. So college. Yeah, yeah, and I came here to Cal Arts actually to as study an classical undergraduate. Guitar. Yes, as a guitarist. Who was the teacher? At and that point? Uh, the the main teacher was Ronald Purcell, um, who was a pretty well known teacher, not a performer, and uh, and I believe Stuart Fox was a graduate student possibly mm -hmm. when I came. He's he he was a bit ahead of me playing classical guitar and he's been on the faculty for a long time now yeah um uh but i got more interested in composing in fact i got so interested in it that i gave up being a guitar major and, and switched to composition major um and uh that went along up until you know i i think i started working here 35 years ago mm -hmm. And uh, by the end of the last century, about 1999, uh, I was playing uh, <laughs> in a duo with Marty Walker, who's a great clarinetist, bass clarinetist. Yeah. And um, we were doing music for clarinets and piano. So pretty classical uh, duo stuff. Yeah. My music. Some other people who were on the Cold Blue label, uh, Harold Budd, some other things. Yeah. But all, all composed music. Right. But I was starting to hear some guitar playing from my students, or not from my students, but they would bring music to show me, or I would uh, read about something in Guitar Player, about Japanese experimental guitar playing or something. And it got me interested in playing a little again. And then because Marty was such a great improviser on the bass clarinet, I said, "How? why don't we try this idea that we do the classical stuff for the first half of a concert and then the second half we just play electric guitar and bass clarinet. Yeah. So we started doing that. That was called Ghost Duo. That was the group. Yeah. And um, so from then on, I got more and more involved in playing guitar. So I played on concerts in L.A. with various groups. We stayed together for a while, Ghost Duo. Mm -hmm. um, later, I formed a group with Ulrich Krieger, who teaches here, and a student from here, uh, Tony DiGennaro, mm -hmm. which was called the Feedback Wave Riders. And that that was the core group, but we had a larger group, which included Vinnie Golia mm -hmm. and Brian Walsh right. and Chaz Smith on, uh, you know, custom built pedal steel guitars. Right. So we had three guitars and three winds, and you've heard that music. And yeah, it's, I was it's, here. I heard you guys say right. too. Right, and, and yeah. so it's really a, just a giant group organism of sound. <laughs> That's just embarrassing. It's okay. You can edit that out.
we'll just keep it because that's entertaining. Okay, that's okay, it. That's good too. Okay. And uh, other groups and things like that, other right. situations. And I've I've played with Vinny a few yeah. times over the years, and uh, um, and at present I have two groups that I'm playing, and one is. Mm-hmm. Uh, a guitar trio which plays primarily composed music by the members of the group right we do also improvise and uh that's trio amplifonic um and the other group is more like a band which is or what they used to call a power trio Mm -hmm. and that's spectral dawn spirits and that's me on guitar and Derek stein who was a student here on cello and has recorded cello and piano music with me but he plays five string electric and he's playing that yeah. and james lake who is also from cal arts uh originally from san diego one of this group of great musicians who came from san diego mm-hmm. i don't know between eight and ten years ago or something we had a whole bunch of uh really talented people who were part of the scene down in san diego and then went back to school and so James is our drummer now. So. Oh, okay. That was part of that. I mean, I guess because in San Diego you had Dresser down there, Mark Dresser, and, and um, the trombone player um, who's not there anymore, I don't think. He's in New York. Um, I'll think of his name in a second. Um, George Lewis? George Lewis. Okay, yeah. 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 So the, they, there was sort of a pipeline from there to here? Well, I don't know. These were really young people so mm-hmm. i think they came out of high school and they just found out about cal arts and came cool uh they were all doing different things mm-hmm. but but um james was he stood out he was a great drummer then and i always wanted him in a group so yeah but it's but it's interesting because you said what didn't happen so oh what didn't what, happen what didn't is happen? well i mean 1999 is also the year i wrote um if not one of the best violin concertos of the 20th century, certainly one of the last violin concertos of the 20th century, 1999. And, and the uh, name of that piece is? Pray, uh, Pray of Time's Passing. Go get it. Um, well. Can you get it? I don't think you can get it. Okay, you can't get it. Okay, so forget <laughs> getting it. Okay, don't don't get it. Um, can you get and it? I, it's not online? I, I don't have it posted online. Okay. Um, it's been played a few times. Uh, I did about four or five concertos by that time, and had let, been, let me just clarify for a second. Better than the red violin? I, I'm not. I'm not going <laughs> to compare it. What isn't that John Corigliano or something? Didn't he write the music for that uh, movie? Yeah. yeah, it's fine. Like, like, I mean, the violin was red. That's all I'm saying is I just don't know if it's as good as that. <sighs> the violin wasn't red. Whoever was playing it, it was okay. normal. Fair enough. Normal color. <laughs> normal colored violin. Yeah. Um, but you were asking what didn't happen. Yeah, what didn't Well, happen. what didn't happen was I was interested in writing pretty ambitious pieces for mm-hmm. orchestras, and I wasn't really breaking into the L.A. Philharmonic or right. the uh, Boston Symphony or the Berlin Philharmonic. It was more like... Right community orchestras which are you know fine and they have some great players in them and and some less advanced players and i just got a little disillusioned with putting in that much work and not being able to really get clear feedback not just a good performance but just clear feedback as to what if my intentions even worked right i'm not an improviser out of the jazz tradition by any means i would say i come out of the experimental tradition which comes out of things like um, Stockhausen's band that he Mm -hmm. formed to play his text pieces or uh, things that a lot of American experimental composers have done yeah and so my idea is that I'm not so interested in expressing something or telling a story like in a jazz format where Mm -hmm. you know you play the head, and then everyone gets to tell their story, and it's there. Uh, I know, and I'm not. I'm, I'm not, not no, criticizing no, I, that. I mean, the yeah. great ones did that. Yeah. Um, but I'm more interested in creating some or seeing what we can make that um, 
is a group mind. Well, is it tied to more of Cardu? I mean, so if you're well, it could into be. The I mean, all those. Yeah, Cardu, yeah, it could be anybody who also jam the yeah. A. I forget the group A M M or something. John Tilbury and yeah, yeah, Keith yeah. Rowe and the all those people. Band, kind of, yeah. Um, and there are different groups. Sure. Uh, there's the that group in Italy that Morricone was a trumpet player in. I forget yeah. what the Grupo Improv. I, I forget what they're called. Yeah. But they've got recordings of them, and they were pretty much free, uh, in the sense of they didn't. Uh, so this is so Ennio Morricone was in a free improvising band in Italy. Yes. Wow. With I didn't. Evangelisti, I mean, I know his... the composer. Really? Because I know yeah. his chamber music. Like yeah. the, he wrote, there's a couple of discs of his chamber music, which are interesting to listen to. I don't know those, but I know that he was part of that. You've never, group. you've never heard those. So those, those are interesting. So, the, mm. but those are very much sort of, you know, mid-century Italian, you know, modern, semi-modern semi music, modernism. Yeah. Okay. So, so Im improvisation tied to the experimental tradition. Well, or that grew out of that, and I also. Uh, always did that as a student with various people. I also played in yeah. in groups that were more uh, electric band instrumentation, mm -hmm. you know, guitars, electric bass, drums, but also keyboards, percussion, right. weird woodwind instruments or things yeah. like that. So I, I, I mean, there are a number of groups. Still Life was a group I had with Michael Bennett, the mm -hmm. composer, and um, that was uh, kind of pulsing, uh, not so much rock influence, but more influence, I guess, by minimalism, Terry Riley or Phil Glass. It yeah. was compared to Tangerine Dream when we mm -hmm. recorded it. Who are some guitar players that are like big influences on you? Hendrix, Clapton, Beck and Page, and Michael Bloomfield. Okay. Have to get an American guitarist in there, yeah. but it, I was very much into that music. I think yeah. it was you who first introduced me to Rise Chatham, right? right. And yeah. the guitar ring. Yeah, and, and Glenn Bronca and all those people. Yeah. yeah, I discovered that later, though. I mean, yeah. I didn't know about that stuff when we were. It, it, most of the stuff I was doing with those groups predates that, actually. Right. And what I didn't know about those guys was that I didn't actually realize how big an influence uh, Chatham was. On like Sonic Youth and those bands, right? Well, he predates the Glenn Bronca group. Exactly. He was the first one who was doing rock. Well, I think uh, Bronca was in his band. Possibly, I'm yeah. not sure, but yeah, it's just the, the, those early pieces of his yeah. are the first ones that I know of. But um, but later, um, two guitarists who I think really got me interested in playing were Derek Bailey, yeah, and um, Sonny Chirac. Yeah, but not, and I mean his stuff is very good later. But the stuff he did with Herbie Mann, that type of playing that he did with yeah. Herbie Mann's group, where they're playing very straight, and then he just does these wild solos with the bottle, and he's just all over the place, yeah. just like head scratching to people, I imagine. <laughs> and uh, and I and my friend saw that group. Uh, Herbie Mann's group and Sonny Schrock's own group opened for them. So the whole first set was completely yeah. outside and then it got back and then you'd hear the modal jazz with the wild solos. Yeah. And then people like Keiji Haino, Japanese guitarist, and right. he, pl he plays a lot of instruments, but his right. guitar playing. And Ray Russell, who was a session player in England, mm -hmm. who played on a lot of the James Bond movies, I think, but also developed um, a kind of interesting way to play. Cool. Um, so all those people, Morg Spinham, and, and uh, acoustic guitarists like John Fahey, and mm -hmm. um, there's a, a Stefan Basho Jungens is a German guitarist, and... and uh, who did finger style stuff? Yeah. And, um, did you ever listen to James Blood Omar? Did you like? Oh, James sorry. You, like, thanks for reminding me. Yeah, yeah, he was he was one of them too at that time. Absolutely. There's I'm familiar that with his there's work. There's that album, Freelancing. Freelancing, oh. and even the earliest with Ornette. Yeah. His great Tales of Captain Black. Yeah, exactly. I mean, my main compositional stuff the last ten years has been writing music for these plays that are written by Wajdi Moad, right. um, who's um, uh, 
born Lebanese and grew up in Paris and then moved to Canada. And he was the director of the French National Theater mm -hmm. in, in Montreal for four years. Um, and uh, I've written about five, the incidental music for five of his plays. And they, they're, are they staged in the States? They're All not they're staged States. much. They're staged quite frequently in Europe. The first one I did music for, I think, has something like 180 performances. Wow. Um, and uh, But in America, only once he was brought over to um, Washington, D.C., to right. the big theater there, and uh, they had um, one of his plays being done. Yeah. But they're in French. Uh, and I don't think they've traveled over here yet. That's so I've been doing that. That's kept me composing. Right. I actually am composing a lot over these years, but yeah. not so much for a piece for these musicians or that. Right. It's more out of the play. And th that developed some of the music I wrote for the plays developed into the cello and piano music that is from a folio, which right. are seven pieces. And there are some ideas that got into the latest CD, the Celesta CD. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because I was gonna, I was definitely gonna highlight that as those, the last couple of recordings that you have put out have been just, I love them. And there's, there's, they're beautiful. Thanks. They're wonderful. I appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah, no, seriously, not blowing smoke. I believe you. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's thank true. thank you. <laughs> it's true, they're heavily listened to in my world. So the other thing I think that's interesting, you know, with the recordings that we're doing now is that so we've known each other for a really long time, but we've never played together. That's so right. why would you agree to do such a thing? That's why. Wow. That shows a lot of faith. Well, like I told you, I'm interested in work, you know, playing with people to yeah. see what will happen when more than one person's uh, intentions are involved, let's say. Well, so yeah. go on. No, 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 I was going to ask you, so, yeah. so with that being the case, since I know that we already recorded, we've already done this recording, now that we're doing this interview, mm -hmm. so, so how'd that turn out? What do you think? How'd it go? I, did I'm, we do okay? I think we did okay. <laughs> I was impressed, actually, I'm really impressed with your pedal board setup and with just the overall sound, textural sound. Like, it covers a really wide range, we're, which was interesting because we were talking about this, I've gone the other way. Right. Like, I used to do a lot more textural stuff, and now... Um, since I'm playing this acoustic five string semi acoustic thing that um, I'm just going for really natural tone. So it's, it's, it was an interesting. Uh, yeah. But I think that the well, distinction yeah. between them or the, the um, fact that they have a strong profile uh, makes it uh, an interesting interaction. Yeah. You know, yeah. if everyone's playing exactly the same and they yeah. sound the same, it's, it, that's fine. And that might be great. But it's also interesting when two people are playing and one person is making the sounds in a, in a whole different way than the other one. Yeah, right? I agree. You know? No, the contrast is really, really great. Yeah. And, you know, one, one, a couple of the albums, I don't know if I told you this, that I'm really influenced by. So Charlie Hayden did a couple of duo albums. And the first one he did was this album called The Golden Number. Have you, oh, have you, well, have you seen yeah, I've heard. heard yeah, yeah. So that's like he, he does uh, duets with there's only like four pieces on it. It was an LP. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I, he, he plays with Ornette and um, he plays, I think also with, um, is it Archie Shep? I, anyway, he, number of different configurations. I know Ornette's on it for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, that's also the contrast on that album. And it's, it's, it's a big inspiration for me also to kind of find those, what's going to happen differently, you know, as you sit down. And we also talked about a them a little bit. We did it talk. wasn't completely spontaneous. Uh, yeah, we did plan a little we, bit. We, we planned a little, yeah. which I think also helps the first situation, you know, the yeah. first time. Absolutely. It's not just a sense of control, but also a sense of satisfaction. That, that it's not just the, the, the compositional satisfaction, but the satisfaction of playing with other people, mm -hmm. of interacting with other people as you play your music and having that experience. And that's a very fulfilling experience, right? Well, it's what has kept me interested in improvising, right. for sure. Well, thanks. And uh, great. Music will be played. And thank you.